Woj has reported that Trey Murphy suffered a meniscus injury to his left knee. So will he need surgery? How long could he be out for? And how does this affect the Pelicans this season? Plus, are they just cursed? I'll break down everything you need to know in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. Let's go. You are Locked on Pelicans, your daily New Orleans Pelicans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another edition of Locked On Pelicans, the daily podcast covering your favorite team, the New Orleans Pelicans and NBA, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, available wherever you get your podcasts and available on YouTube. I'm your host, Pelicans Insider, credential member of the media, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter. Here with y'all on this Wednesday, we need to kind of bump what was going to be a show about Zion Williamson that'll likely be coming on Monday's episode now. Because we had the news, per Adrian Wojnarowski, reporting that Trey Murphy suffered a meniscus injury. We'll break down what this injury kind of is, the timetables for recovery, so when will we see Trey Murphy back out there on the court, and how it affects the team and everything. Thing you need to know about pretty unfortunate news on a Wednesday. And of course, thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We are free, available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. If you want to support the channel, become an everydayer. Listen, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday live show, 7 p.m. Central. And then soon enough, in about two weeks, we'll be back to five days a week. So listen, Monday through Friday. And I appreciate y'all making Locked On Pelicans part of your day. Saints season starts this weekend. Ross Jackson, host of Locked On Saints, going to be breaking down everything black and gold. Go make sure you check it out. Locked On Saints, your second listen to that. So we got the most Pelicans update news item thing ever, right? With an injury to a key player in the offseason. Before the season even starts, injury luck biting the Pelicans. Of course, right? Just kind of how it how it goes with this team. So what happened? What what happened here? And from what we've gathered so far is just while working out, while doing some training, Trey injured his meniscus of his left knee. You know, a meniscus injury that's kind of like the cartilage stuff. I'm not a doctor that kind of braces your knee and gives you a little bit of cushioning to help some of that stuff and you know, depending on the type of tear, recovery times can really vary depending on that. You know, if there's a full tear of it, sometimes it has to be removed. That's going to put you on the longer end of a recovery time. If it's a partial tear, sometimes they can do surgery to trim it up a little bit. That puts you kind of with some medium recovery time. And then there's also ones where, you know, it doesn't get a lot of blood flow to it, but parts of it do. And you can recover from this without any type of surgery so until we know specifically more and it sounds like they're going to do some imaging on Trey to kind of really find out the extent of what's going on you know surgery has been mentioned as an option but it wasn't like hey he has to get surgery on this so maybe this could be an easier thing than not though if you don't have surgery you usually need to kind of like completely immobilize the leg and completely stay off of it so Depending on that, you know, this is not an uncommon injury in the NBA. No, no injuries are good, but in general, these tend to be okay. You know, you're looking at anywhere from six to eight weeks being typical. You know, if it's eight weeks and let's say it's from Friday when he has sort of the surgery for whatever it is they need to do, that puts his return right around November 3rd. And if you look at the Pelican schedule, they'll have played five games, maybe six games, you know, if he goes a little bit longer than that at that point. Misses some key games early on in the season, certainly, but that's not the biggest amount of games missed certainly need to knock off a lot of rust not being there for preseason training camp any of the practices or anything like that and we'll get into how this kind of impacts the Pelicans on the court in the third segment of today's show we'll also kind of look at Trey in general in the next segment here but even if it's on the 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 longer end of things eight weeks and hold, hold that thought I know what you're thinking you know he hasn't missed that many games and he can get back out on the court relatively 
quickly. And I think that is at least kind of encouraging that overall, overall, these type of meniscus injuries tend to be okay. And Trey has been pretty durable, played 79 games last season for the Pelicans. Missing five games, six games, even if it's 10 games, still could put him on track to play 70 plus games in the NBA this year. I think that's, you know, again, no injuries are good, but when you look at it, okay, could have been a whole lot worse as NBA players tend to make a full recovery from these sorts of things. But, but, and you knew this was coming. I know what you're already thinking. This is the Pelicans. This is the Pelicans. Does anything ever go according to the script, according to plan? Is it going to be six to eight weeks or is it likely or could be likely that it is longer? This is going to be a big test of the player performance and care team that they are revamping per reports. That, you know, how are they going to handle this? This is kind of the first big challenge for all of that. This is also a critical part, you know, a critical time period really in general for the Pelicans. This is make or break is what I'm going to be calling this season a lot. To not get, have one of your best players ready to go at the start of the season. Does that put pressure to kind of get him rushed back? Or do they take a cautious approach and make sure that he's going to be like 200% when he comes back. You know, Zion Williamson went through this uh, a, a similar injury. You know, all of these are different. They're all unique, of course. Players are different. But Zion went through this his rookie year, missed over half the season. That timeline kept getting pushed back. You know, with Brandon Ingram, timeline kept getting pushed back. Zion this past year with the hamstring, timeline kept getting pushed back. If they come out and say six to eight weeks... You know, and then they we will reevaluate things, which is what they'll say, certainly, I would guess. That I think is going to set off alarm bells, right? And worry a lot of people about all of that. So him having this injury and not really trusting the Pelicans or things to go right, I mean, yeah, this this seems scarier than maybe it actually is right like I had some tweeting at me okay it's time to look at the 2024 draft now isn't it and it's like okay we don't need to do that yet I also don't know if this is going to be like cool everything's fine he's back in a couple of weeks it seems like it'll be you know it's it's significant but I will or, or it's it's a big deal I don't know if I would call this like a significant injury depending on what some of the treatment is going to be and what they find when they do you know more tests to kind of try and diagnose exactly what it is. So right now we don't want to jump to conclusions with all of it until we just know more and we just don't have a lot of information just yet. Could be bad, but in general, these tend to skew as okay and recovery is measured in weeks, not months. That's at least a good starting point, even if it doesn't always go that way for the New Orleans Pelicans. And certainly it doesn't always go that way for the New Orleans Pelicans. So we'll see how this one ends up shaking out, but certainly this was the most like kind of Pelicans news. Is this team cursed? Let me know what you think in the comments down below on YouTube. That could have happened, right? That was not the Woj bomb, Woj alert I was expecting to see on my phone in the middle of the day on September 5th. Kind of just deflating, isn't it? In a sense, just we'll get into that more. That's coming up here next in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. Before we get to that, though, today's episode of Locked On Pelicans is brought to you by FanDuel. Get ready for the NFL season with incredible offers from FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Because right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets back guaranteed. And if you're an existing FanDuel customer and you want something, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. So everyone is getting something over at FanDuel when you bet just $5. And now is the best time to join FanDuel. The app is easy to use. I use it for everything, taking all of the Pelicans futures, and you can bet on everything from spreads to player props and more. Go get in on the black and gold here. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season with an offer you won't want to miss. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. 
And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We are here Monday through Friday giving you the Pelicans insight you want, the number one Pelicans podcast, explaining the meniscus tear, when we might see Trey Murphy return, and we'll get into the on-court impact in the next segment here, but I want to look at Trey Murphy kind of himself, uh, you know, as a player, as a person on all of this one, because this is a guy we had very high hopes for, but not just us, people around the league that I've talked to as well. And of course, if you want to support Lockdown Pelicans, be coming every day or listen every single day that we have a show. And don't forget, live show Thursday at 7 p.m. Central. We'll answer your questions. We'll talk this. We'll talk Zion. We'll talk Ingram. Whatever it is you want to talk about my chance to interact with y'all live in the moment and guess what coming next week is probably when I'm going to launch it I got another way for you to interact with me in a way that's just so much better than Twitter so I'm excited to roll this out for y'all it's not what you think we'll talk more about that um, next week once I get everything up and running but I'm actually really excited about that should be a lot of fun so Trey Murphy as we said, the timetable to return can be variable, but it's measured more in weeks than months. Talk yourself off the ledge. Take a breath. I don't think this is going to be like a six-month kind of thing, though fair, it's the Pelicans. Y- you never know with that sort of stuff. But when you look at this injury kind of like historically in the NBA, even recently, there's been a ton of guys who have dealt with this and come back looking great, right? Chris Paul has dealt with a meniscus injury. Derek Rose has dealt with it, but had other injuries that really derailed him. But Chris Paul's been fine. Jimmy Butler has dealt with a meniscus injury. He's been okay. Kawhi Leonard, Joel Embiid, uh, Cam Johnson recently with the Phoenix Suns. He was back in like a month or two, less than that. You know, and even Zion Williamson has dealt with this and his injuries, you know, the other issues with him haven't been tied to that specific one. So people tend to come back from this injury you know, almost just good to go in themselves again. And with the way that Trey Murphy plays, I think this is going to be one of those things where he'll end up, it's just not going to be that big of a dent or impact on his career or anything like that. Depending, depending on how long it takes, you know, if he, there's the new mark of you've got to play 65 games to qualify for end of season awards. You know, he could be, he could be, I don't think he'd win it, but he could be in the running for most improved player, depending on if he starts or not. And more on that in the next segment, you know, he could be in the running for six man of the year too. So it might impact the end of season awards for him, but I think long-term in his NBA career with what he has, how he has kind of progressed and what he's been doing It'll be fine. And look, when we look at this and we're disappointed and we're sad and we're like, this team, you know, all that stuff, you know, and you want to feel bad about things, don't forget to feel bad for Trey too. Like, this sucks for Trey Murphy. You know, the team needs him really badly. Shooting is important. And overall, NBA people are really high on him. If you talk to media people around the league, if you talk to executives with other teams, they all freaking love Trey Murphy. He's kind of like a couple of years ago, you had Karis Levert as like the NBA hipsters favorite player. Mikel Bridges has kind of replaced that role of like, this is the guy that's like sneaky good and you got to watch him, right? You're, you, we, I deeply know the NBA, so watch Mikel Bridges. You know, Trey Murphy's kind of been that guy now too and has supplanted Bridges as Bridges kind of took off at the end of last season. So he's kind of like the f- hipsters favorite NBA player across the league which is really cool and not incorrect here. But this also does suck for Trey Murphy because this is a dude that has been on a mission this offseason, it looks like. We've seen the workout videos. He looks leaner. He looks stronger. It looks like he is always sweaty and doing just insane things. You know, he spent time with the USA Select team getting valuable experience. And all of that is only a sliver of the work that he's put in. And we've seen him do a lot, you know. So of all the players that this could happen to, right, of all the players kind of capable of dealing with this setback, overcoming the setback, it really does feel like with his work ethic and what he does that it should be fine. You know, I tweeted out 
right after that injury or the news broke and I was like Trey will be back in no time and a lot of y'all were like this could be six months he might not be back in no time or how do what do you know Jake I didn't mean it like that I just meant like this dude is gonna work his tail off to get back out there on the court and be fine and I truly believe that and you know maybe he sets an example for others with the team and when you look at it again historically in the NBA this is something that while not common let's say is something that happens and players tend to make a full recovery from even Colin Sexton had it happen recently, right? He had one that ended his season. He ended up kind of coming back and his was a little bit worse. So I think we'll see Trey Murphy out there. When you look at his game and this isn't a knock on him, you know, his game doesn't rely on like insane athleticism, right? It's not like insane speed or insane burst. He has very good size, certainly, but he, you know, his leap ability is good I wouldn't call it elite you know even though he was in the dunk contest and everything so for a guy that you know even if this does impact him in some way he's still going to be an incredible shooter and that's what we wanted to see from him the most shooting 40 percent last season 41 percent if we're rounding up on over six attempts per game 14 and a half points per game on 10.1 shot attempts that's really good efficiency there really growing his game Overall, shooting 91% from the free throw line, grabbing rebounds, kind of doing everything that you wanted to see him doing, you know, adding to his game as the season went on too, which I think was the most impressive thing. We knew he could shoot threes, then he started dunking more, right? And then at the end of the season, you saw him take guys off the dribble with finesse moves, not just going in a straight line to go for the dunk on a bad closeout or, you know, a an overdone closeout. He just went, did whatever he needed to do. Had a lot more touch around the rim and in more moves in his bag, including, you know, a mid range pull up jumper and things like that. And so to see the game grow, he's just going to, he's going to be fine. It's a setback. It sucks. This is a hurdle, certainly in his career, but long term, I'm not, I don't know of all the guys on the team dealing with an injury like this. I think Trey Murphy is the one that I'm least worried about really when it comes down to it, which is a nice feeling given what we normally talk about when it comes to injuries and the Pelicans and all of that. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Are you long-term worried about Trey Murphy? Do you think he's going to be fine with all of this? Or do you think the team is cursed? Which very well they may be because this is just unfortunate. Anytime we get our hopes up, you know, something's got to pull us down. But I think this will end up being okay. He's going to miss some games, but I don't think it's going to be as big of a deal as it potentially could. So now what for the team? Who steps up? What's the rotation going to look like? Because Trey was going to have a big role in that. Let's talk about that coming up here next in today's episode of Locked On Pelicans. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We are here Monday through Friday. Coming to you like no one else is, the number one Pelicans podcast, giving you the insight into this injury, what it means for, you know, the recovery time, what it could look like, trying to get you prepped for whatever it might be, what this means for Trey Murphy as a player, and now what it means for the Pelicans. So subscribe wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. If you want to support the channel, be coming every day or listen Monday through Friday. I am excited to be back with y'all. Even after this news, I'm still kind of fired up because we're talking about like real things around the team. And I love this. So thank you for making Locked On Pelicans part of your day. If you listen one day a week, that's great. I'm thrilled. I love that. Make it two if you can. Make it every day if you can do that. Show is designed to fit your morning commute, something like that, bite size, so you know what's going on around the team. And we'll have a new way to interact with me. I'll probably rolling out on Monday, I'll explain it to y'all. It should be a lot of fun. I'm excited about all that. I just got to finish getting it set up, and I got time to do that on Thursday after the live show, putting in extra work for y'all. So what's this mean for the Pelicans long-term? You know, first and foremost, it probably won't be that long-term. I think Trey comes back. Trey will be fine. This is an injury, depending on the severity. We don't know yet, so subject to change, could end up being okay. But it does mean players are going to need to step up. And, you know, when I first saw this and was thinking about it, you know, I'll be able to share my reactions with y'all in the moment. 
through what I want to roll out on Monday even quicker, which is going to be great, is, you know, Jordan Hawkins. My mind immediately went to him of, okay, he's going to get more minutes. I don't know if he was going to be in the rotation to start the year. When you, when you look at the rotation, it's not that easy to always figure out because these guys, you know, there's just a ton of players, right? You're starting five. And we'll, we'll touch on this in a second here. CJ McCollum, Herb Jones, Brandon Ingram, Zion Williams, and Jonas Valanciunas. Other five in the rotation, so a 10-man rotation. Trey Murphy, Alvarado, Larry Nance Jr., Dyson Daniels, and Najee Marshall. Leaving out Jordan Hawkins, right? So Hawkins now gets into the rotation when he wouldn't have been in before. And they also need him because, while well, they need the three-point shooting. Trey Murphy, with his three-point shooting was going to be key to the Pelicans here. I wanted to do a show on Zion where we would have talked about, you know, the need for spacing around him and some lineups. And I have this really great show planned. It'll just be on Monday now. And Trey was a key part of that because of, you know, his shooting from deep. Dude was really good at it. 40% on over six attempts per game. When it comes to volume, next closest was Brandon Ingram at 39% on 3.6 attempts per game. You get CJ there at 7.2 attempts per game, shooting almost 39% from three as well. You need that shooting. You need those court spacers out there. Well, the next guy up isn't going to be, look, and as much as I love him, Jose Alvarado, you know, it's not going to be Najee Marshall, not going to be Larry Nance Jr. It's not anybody else. The next closest one to fill that void is going to be Jordan Hawkins. So I think he definitely gets an opportunity to be in the rotation and get called on early and show why he is worth the lottery pick that the Pelicans invested in him. The other thing that this does, which I find kind of like funny and interesting, because I was going to do a whole show about it. There was a valid question to ask of who starts, Herb Jones or Trey Murphy the third, And when it comes to the starting lineup, that was the big question that we didn't have an answer to yet. You know, I think I default to Herb Jones. I think you could easily make the argument for it to be Trey Murphy. I think you make the argument for either guy very easily. And your argument, whoever you chose, wouldn't be wrong. Well, this kind of solves it now. This gives Herb Jones... I don't want to say a longer leash, right? They just signed him to a big time extension, giving him a bunch of money. He doesn't need a longer leash. He's pretty safe. But this like solidifies his spot in the starting lineup for sure. And he's going to need to deliver. It does add, while it gives him a longer leash, it does add a little bit more pressure to him. All of a sudden now, you can't take him out of the starting lineup and put Trey in if you just simply need more shooting. You need him to shoot the three ball well. And that is not something that he's done a tremendous job of. 33.5% last season. That's, simply put, not all that great, is it? But if you look at the way he kind of closed the year, it got better. The final 37 games that he played this season, 37.2%. Okay, That's an improvement, right? That's a very big deal. When you stretch it out to the final, I can make these numbers work here. Where did that go? The final, let me make it the final. Oh, no, there we go. I got it now. I had to go back. So basically the beginning of February on, he shot 42.6% from three on very limited attempts, 2.3 per game. But those are good numbers. That's higher than what Trey Murphy shot. That's over a decent sample size, 27 games. He showed he potentially can be a good three-point shooter. And so he needs to be that version of Herb Jones. The starting lineup needs those threes to go down to burn teams. Again, they're not going to, and I just got something from Woj. Okay, oh, Christian Wood. Oh, no, good luck with the Lakers. That's actually a good signing for them. Not Would not have been a good move for New Orleans. So I think that... This gives um, Herb a longer leash, but also puts more pressure on him because they need those threes to drop. If he goes through a a rough stretch to start the year, that is not ideal, not great, and that is a big part of the problem, I think, 
that the Pelicans could run into. So they need Trey Murphy to come back from this early. They also need Herb Jones to hit his threes, and they need the rookie, Jordan Hawkins, to be ready. I'm going to tell you something that just came through, and that's why I got distracted, because I got a text message that is me and one, two, three, four, five other people on it, and they're all locked on hosts. This has to do with Christian Wood. We have a group chat for, like, people who have dealt with Christian Wood on their team. So everyone who's like, I want Christian Wood, everyone of the lockdown hosts whose team he's been on, we are all in like a support group together. We have jackets and everything. I just The text just came through a group text with a bunch of the hosts. Welcome to the Christian Wood experience, lockdown Lakers hosts. I've added um, our lockdown uh, Rockets host, our Pistons host, and Jake, who are now our Wood support group. We have a running joke about how you don't want Christian Wood on your team more than one season. Okay, we're going to end the show there. That was a digression. I am sorry. just made me laugh. I forget what our jackets say. Hold on. Let me see if I can get an answer to this really quickly in the moment. What what do our jackets say? I'm doing this as I'm recording it. It's not even live. I'm going to see if I can get an answer and tell you as I wrap up the show here. But anyway, that's going to do it. For Locked On Pelicans and the Locked On Christian Wood support group here, we will do the live show Thursday, 7 p.m. Central. We'll talk probably more about this injury, starting lineup, rotation questions. We'll get into Brandon Ingram, FIBA, all of that. I want to talk about Zion Williamson on Monday, how he can have a big season, how, what the Pelicans need to do to help him have a big season. It's going to be a lot of fun. As always, this is the Locked On Pelicans podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter. I did not get a text back quick enough here. I'll share it with y'all on the live show on Thursday. Maybe a picture of said support group jackets as well. And I'll see y'all then Thursday, 7 p.m. live show. Can't wait.